I think I should introduce myself. I'm Dmitry Jumak from Minsk, Belarus. And by the stroke of luck, I'm acquainted with Viktor Arestov and Igor Karhov, and I've happened to visit Viktor's company in China, where he implements and installs motors with Slavyanka winding on motorcycles and basic cars he has them. In general, I've been interested in alternative energy sources and electric drives for cars, quad runners, motorcycles and bicycles, but it was really of interest for me to go and see and touch with my own hands what it is like. I succeeded in assembling two motorcycles myself and installing two of such motors on them. I don't know what their standard size is, but those motorcycles we made using the motors without any settings at all were able to develop the speed of 96 km from the very first try and the consumption was low. Victor was thrilled by what we had made. With a simple 84 volt 52 ampere hour batteries, we traveled around way high. He showed me the sights. That is approximately 29 kilometers. Then we got back to the Enterprise, another 19 kilometers. We spent less than 50% of the battery charge. Moreover, we didn't restrict the speed rates. Since I was very interested in testing the electric motorcycle on the road, taking into account the fact that I rode an electric motorcycle for the first time in my life last month, I really enjoyed the experience. I can say for sure that I'm in love with this transport from now on. And as compared with any electric transport driven by direct current motors with permanent magnets, I should note down a great difference. When decelerating, there is no natural break in here. The motors are synchronous and there is no recuperation, and thus the vehicle is coasting. You break with your chest against the air. This is an incredible feeling. The way it develops speed so fast is something you should experience rather than be told about. When at the traffic lights, you're among the first vehicles and the cars are just starting off, your speedometer shows the allowed 60 km per hour and you're leaving them far behind. This feeling can be compared to anything. What can I say about the complexity of installing the motor? Since I'm an electrician, keen on electronics, it was interesting for me to assemble this motorcycle from scratch myself. Well, I can say I assembled all the machines from scratch. I mean a motorcycle was bought the basic model without the electric motor, but with the installed instrument panel and wiring, but for connecting, a regular petrol motor, then with minimum modification, basically without any modification at all. The throttle was removed, that's what I really liked. I removed the throttle and clutch, these are redundant parts. Everything connected with the tank and petrol was removed too. I simply cut off the connections with the nipping pliers, insulated the wires, 
and did nothing else. Then I installed such an electric motor. Or of this type, it looks very similar. Then the controller was connected. We used a computer for the setup. I assembled the first motorcycle myself. There happened to be no third-party guidance at all. It took me about three days. As for the second motorcycle, I started to assemble it in the evening. And in a day, it was ready to go with accumulator batteries. I'm taking a motor and controller to Minsk with me now. I'll try to assemble something using a Minsk motorcycle. There were middle-class motorcycles there, as far as I understand, with the motors around 250 cubic centimeters. They are quite heavy and confident on the road. On the pictures of those motorcycles, you can see how the motors and accumulator batteries are located. I mean, anyone who bought the kit or after rewinding the motor by themselves, I know that do enough use to publish the winding calculations and anyone who wanted could do it. I'm a qualified electrical engineer, that's why I never had any questions concerning the motor. I mean, I've watched some videos on YouTube where people share negative opinions about these motors. After I've held it in my own hands and seen what a wonderful thing it is, I can confidently say that any comparison with regular induction motors and moreover with permanent magnet motors is merely inadequate. What else can I add? I have plenty of impressions. I visited China, to be more precise one city in China, relaxed, tested electric machines. They are of course simpler there, not like this unit. They are targeted at the group of people who can afford such a car with their one or two month salary and travel protected from the wind and rain. It's also quite interesting. The basic electric machines had the maximum speed of 45 km per hour. After installing this Duinov's motor and controller with no modification at all, they easily developed the speed of 65-70 km per hour while consuming less electrical energy. The battery is also a bit simpler and there is more joy of riding a motorcycle. The acceleration dynamics is excellent. I will leave the pictures for the guys and maybe I also have videos of the blue motorcycle. It's lightweight, approximately the same class as the Minsk motorcycle. So I will try to install the motor on some Minsk motorcycle. I will buy an old frame with the wheels because nothing else is required. No motor, no controller, no accumulator battery. You can put the motorcycle on the rear wheel from a standstill, which is exactly what Victor did when starting off at the traffic lights. He turned the motorcycle upside down, got himself injured, that happened because he didn't expect it. The button accidentally switched from the echo mode with smooth acceleration to the sport mode and the motorcycle broke loose at the same turn of the throttle without any jumps went up and turned upside down it would be a good idea to film that 
but there are no stunt performers. And Victor doesn't want to repeat this experiment, even in protective gear. He was thrilled to bits. Overwhelmed with emotions when he came back to the company with an injured elbow. I can say that I easily accelerated the blue motorcycle to 60 kilometers in 3 4 seconds. As for the red and the white one, I had about 300 meters of the road stretch, and then there were the traffic lights and standing cars. I easily accelerated it to 86 kilometers, and Victor's motorcycle reached 96 kilometers. And the star I poorly fastened here came loose, and the chain flung off here. It was a celebration, so I don't know what maximum speed it can develop. I suppose it can go 100 km per hour easily, as for 110, 115, you should try it. In addition, we did that using a standard 165 controller. Now the 275 controllers have been installed and the settings have been changed. But the tests will be held without me. I will probably learn about the results from YouTube or get some videos to my email. I know that Victor posted the videos when we are riding the motorcycles in regular urban traffic and in the country too. You can see the motorcycle dynamics, acceleration, starting off at the traffic lights. You can hardly add anything else here. You should just have a look at it or come and try it yourself. Dmitry doesn't mean that you used less powerful controllers that couldn't unleash the motor's potential completely. Yes, it does, and I don't know if the new controllers will be able to unleash the whole potential. You should combine the motor, controller, and battery capacity. The battery BMS is set to 150 amperes. And though Victor said that 150 amperes is the nominal value, I'm not sure. Now he made settings in the controller and allowed it to provide 270 amperes. I don't know what the motor will be capable of with these settings. I'm very curious, but my time in China is up. I could stay there 30 days without a visa. I spent 28 days there. That's why all the other tests will be held without me. I'm happy to have the opportunity to touch it with my own hands, test, and get plenty of impressions. I traveled via Moscow and visited Igor, so the laboratory, equipment, the place where these motors are tested and the new ones are produced. I know that this is a 5 or 7 kilowatt motor, but I didn't hold it in my hands. I have seen a large batch of these motors produced and currently located in China, but it's according to Victor. He was full of admiration showing the parameters, because these parameters hardly said anything to me. I had never ridden a motorcycle before that, that's why I was quite skeptical about them. But I can say once again with admiration that motorcycles with these motors deserve attention.